Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Let me make sure I'm recording this. This is my official Devil May Cry 5 trailer breakdown for the Game Awards. Just a little disclaimer here. This trailer for the Game Awards 2018 was not the one they showed at the conference. It was an abridged version of this trailer. This is the extended edition, so we see a lot more gameplay. We see a lot more going on with the story. And there was a press release of information where they talked about the mysterious man, V. So we're gonna get right into it. This initial part may have spoilers, but it's for a good reason. Please skip to the time code provided in the video as we talk about the first segment and then we'll proceed on from there without spoilers. Peggy 18. So this is the intro. Now we have Dante, Trish, and Lady fighting against this demon here, which is Yurzen or Ursin or however you fucking pronounce his name. I'm tired. I just woke up, so please forgive me. But Ursin is the main antagonist, the main focal point. Now I want you to pay very close attention to his voice. Now, the reason I said pay close attention to his voice is because this trailer actually shows some things and had some secrets in the background that people might not be aware of. So Urson is actually more than likely going to be Virgil in this rendition of Devil May Cry. The reason I say that is because his voice was modulated and a couple of people tampered with his voice. So Urson actually sounds a bit like this when you play with the voice settings. It has begun. I will show you your worst nightmares. I will give you the despair. Now, I think that's pretty cool. That's going to lead to a lot of speculation that was already there. A lot of people predicted that maybe Urson is a vessel for Virgil as well as V, and he needs to reclaim his soul in a distinct way. There's a man who attacks Nero at the beginning, and it's assumed that this is a, another vessel of Virgil. So it's gonna be quite weird to explain all of this plot with Virgil in other bodies, his soul is everywhere. But this happened with DMC4. That was the starting point of the Angelos having a fragment of a dark angel. Uh, so it's going to correlate a bit into this trailer a little bit later on with the character of V and we're gonna point some things out from there. Uh, but without the spoilers, we're finally done here. We're going to fully analyze this thing. And now at the beginning you see Everyone is in despair. Everyone's being beaten. Dante, Lady, and Trish. We finally have an enemy that is stronger than the legendary Devil Hunter. And as we see here, Rebellion breaks. Rebellion is gone, people. It's something that we knew about according to some of the leaks because this scene has been leaked before. So at the beginning of the game, we are going to presume that everyone gets defeated from here. So we're gonna skip ahead because we saw this like three times. Okay. The typical banging devil trigger music. 
gotta let it out gotta let it out now this stuff is interesting we have an air fight here Nero is fighting this guy in midair so I wonder will there be some sort of grab prompt with that because it looks very dynamic maybe you could fail that particular encounter and take a hit but that looks crazy because he does the grab and it looks like a little fight that might be an animation there but that is pretty cool because I never seen a buster grab into a grapple where the enemy tries to fight out of it and then he takes the massive hit and then there's that animation there where it looks like he got hit by the buster arm and slammed into the ground So we have Nero doing an assortment of actions. That is the time stop mechanic that he has called Quicksilver. Ironically, um, that was the official name by Matt Walker. And it does essentially what you think it does. It stops the enemies for a temporary amount of time with the arm. You see him charge it, pulse it into an enemy. <laughs> that sounded dirty. There's an uppercut there. So you can still do arm actions in the process and that might lead to a breaker and break the arm, clearly. So we have some more grapple action. It likes to kill demon things. That's why I him that we have the whip arm that can throw demons all over the place, create some range, Gerbera which does the lasers tomboy which as i said before i'm not sure if i said it before but you cannot move while you have this arm so you're pretty much stationary when you have this arm and it deals a lot of power when you use it now this is interesting we have a giant chicken boss <laughs> it's kind of weird it's giving me all these weird flashbacks to the very, very strange and out of place enemies that was in Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge where you fought like a stupid dinosaur that slammed his head into the ground. So DMC is returning with some particular boss forms that seem super weird and it's just amazing. So the chicken boss that we see here, it has like some blue sort of, uh, crystallize thing on his back maybe that represents an attack maybe it does like a Godzilla kaiju spit of a giant fucking flame wave you could call it whatever you want I don't know I'm super hype but this boss looks it looks like your standard fare you know a boss that could be attacked from multiple angles you could do a lot of things with it he uses the arm grapples it a little bit trips it up which is interesting that might lead to some stunning properties there and then you have this giant monstrosity got some grapples in oh he revs up the sword and kills it now look at that shit it's so much shit going on like some hyped up wrestling moves because it looks like he's about to do a suplex to an angelo see that Oh, that's so awesome. It's like a backdrop or powerbomb, I guess. Powerbomb style. This is cool because he's attacking a boss or a sub boss, but he's like covered in blood and shit. So very cool attention to detail here. And here's the scene where Nero is in the RV with V. But we're gonna talk about this upcoming V gameplay. Now we have the confirmed bird that's supposed to be Griffin. Supposedly V summons three enemies to do his bidding while in the middle of combat. And this bird is called Griffin. It's a callback to the particular bosses that you would see in Devil May Cry 1. So there's Griffin, which is the bird. Then there's the shadow, which is the panther-like enemy that stretches across the screen and does multiple attacks. And then there is Nightmare, which is a giant golem in this game that forms when V does Devil Trigger. 
Also, he calls him Shakespeare because of the book, so that's a pretty funny reference. So there is the panther enemy, Shadow. You can launch the bird into attack from what I'm noticing here. See the panther attacking, the bird is attacking, so I think maybe all three enemies can be dynamic and on the battlefield. Uh, some people are kind of disappointed that you cannot obtain enemies by defeating them and using them on the battlefield. So think about the Hades Claw from God of War, where you could use that after you defeated an enemy or maybe you defeated like a sub boss and then that enemy will come into play on field but we haven't seen all of these attacks yet all of a summons so maybe there's a possibility that there could be some extra summoning attacks we don't know yet but these are the main three so let's see also v is no slouch he can run so that was something that like almost triggered me like is V just walking the entire time while he's summoning enemies but according to later gameplay updates that we saw on the DMC Twitter he can run around he can be mobile with the panther and the bird so if you're worried about mobility then V has you covered he can get around a little bit you can tell the character is crippled with the cane, but he can use the cane in an attack to do like this weird sort of jump attack where he grapples and then he launches off the enemy. Maybe that will be used for jump canceling purposes. Now this is interesting. Griffin also has the lightning attacks that he had, you know, during DMC one. It's a big fucking smorgasbord of references to Devil May Cry 1 with these summons. And you see Shadow does this AOE attack that sticks everyone and shoots them in the air. Also, the Panther still attacks while doing that. It's crazy. There's this dynamic cane move that looks like another area of effect. Like he launches it and then they disperse into the ground and then he comes back down. So I assume the enemy is like further damaged because of that. It's a lot to digest, I love it. Also, V's theme is up now in case you're wondering, it's called Crimson Storm. And if you want my personal opinion, I believe the theme is all right, but it feels like the lyrics are very, very incomprehensible. I wish they had a lyric sheet for this particular song so I can understand what exactly is being said, but it is a great sort of blend between mysterious themes and all these different themes like, you know, grunge rock, uh, gothic rock, uh, a little bit of electronica in there. So I think it's okay. I, I just said it was great, didn't I? I'm so fucking hyped up. So I think it's just all right, but I wish there was, you know, a lyrical sheet. And I also wish there was, you know, um, a little bit more pizzazz to it. Like it doesn't stick out and feel amazing like Devil Trigger does, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna continue on here. So this is very interesting. V gets stabbed here by the boss that Dante fought before, uh, Cavalieri, I believe. And then he teleports behind him and does an attack. So it's like a fake death, fake damage move I must do where he appears and reappears behind the enemy if you time it right. So that's very interesting. I've never seen anything like that in DMC ever. And this is also awesome. Now this is apparently, according to the Devil May Cry community, this is supposedly a jab to DMC Devil May Cry, the reboot where the character's hair goes white after devil triggering. But this game does it and it's fucking awesome. It looks cool. Like 
it looks seriously badass for this game so it feels like Isuno's little jab even though he was being very respectful to the Ninja Theory team I just find it funny that someone has a hair trigger in this fucking game and once you do the hair trigger there's a meteor that summons Nightmare and he's a big golem that could be used you can mount him to no homo <laughs> just the way that sounds is so fucking stupid <laughs> but it's incredible like there's a giant golem that fucks shit up for you and and man it's amazing he destroys the entire environment the physics engine looking so incredible here he can also like destroy environments as you see right there with the laser the ultimate fuck you beam is in effect here so there's nightmare griffin and then there's another like jump grapple where he defeats an enemy and the camera goes like in slow-mo with the kill cam see he's riding the back of the golem and it's time for dante so look at this it's a giant kaiju fight i wonder can you do this with all like bosses with nightmare i assume you can Look at this. King Kong versus Godzilla, bitch. King Kong versus Godzilla. Look at this. Amazing. We need your help, Dante. Also, you won't hear it too clearly in this video, but they did replace the lead vocalist of Subhuman uh, with a vocalist called Michael Barr. He was an ex-member of a band called Volumes. Basically, I believe Hermita got into some pretty serious allegations after he received some sexual pictures from an underage child, which makes him a scumbag, definitely. And I think Capcom definitely had to distance themselves from this PR nightmare. Dig around a little bit about the Subhuman controversy and you will see it. Subhuman was a song for Dante in DMC5 and it just wasn't that great. It felt like there was autistic screeching in the lyrics and I couldn't make out what the fuck was being said. I talked about Crimson Storm not having any decipherable lyrics, but Subhuman was worse. So I'm glad they have a new vocalist now. Maybe we can comprehend what's going on with Michael Barr. The little bit that I heard of the new rendition of Subhuman does sound a little bit tolerable. I guess people were looking for a more um, permanent approach with removing the song entirely, but I knew they weren't going to take away Suicide Silas's work because they pay for that song. So they went with the best compromise, which was finding a better vocalist to suit the job and hopefully get rid of the PR nightmare from there. Uh, so that's what Capcom did. They added new vocals to Subhuman via Michael Barr. And we haven't heard the full version, but the little bit that I heard, it sounded pretty okay. Uh, but I guess people who really didn't care about Subhuman in the first place with the instrumentals not being replaced will probably get the deluxe edition instead. Just throwing that little update out there. Here's Dante with the Faust hat. Now you know every gaming journalist did not look into how the Faust hat worked or the end screen orbs that you get. So you know I have to throw my shots out there. You know I have to do it. Because you can use orbs for attacks. Look at that, man. Angry Joe, eat your heart out. So you have Dante doing the signature dance macabre. Now, this is interesting because it goes back to the theory that I said earlier in the video that was spoilers. V looks like he's melting away. It looks like he cannot maintain his composure. And the lyrics in Crimson Storm, the main lyrical piece is fight for your life. So I think V is going to be the more serious character in this game compared to Dante and Nero. He's actually fucking dying and it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out to see this through so here's some e and l action you have the baby fouls attacking if you guys didn't know there's like a fouls that like shoots orbs at enemies see that here's the meteor attack more of the bike in action 
there is the Cerberus weapon that's been updated to be like a bow staff, the regular Cerberus nunchucks, and then it could also be electricity properties applied to it as well. And according to this scene in particular, I think you fight like an upgraded variant of Cerberus, so they call it King Cerberus. So that might be a returning boss on, in this game and you might benefit from getting three different styles of Cerberus here, which is fucking crazy. Yeah, I'll take you out for a walk. Look at this, more bow staff action. Made it for lady. There is the upgraded Kalina Ann. Yeah, she paid for it, so consider it a rental. Look at this, oh, look at all that. Oh, <laughs> man, this is fucking incredible. Look at all that jump cancel possibility. There's DT, Stinger, DT Stinger. I don't know what that move was. It's like an electricity move here. Maybe with like the nunchucks, more AOE stuff. And this is the fucking, well, this is not the money shot yet, but as you can see, there's V, there's Dante. They have a guest system now, and this system is similar to the system that was introduced in Resident Evil 6. What I mean by that is, there are some times in the campaign where you intersect with another partner. So let's say you're playing with Leon, you might intersect with Ada. Let's say you're playing with Chris, you might intersect with uh, the other characters in the game. And it created this sort of co-op experience like sometimes Chris is with Jake and they might do dynamic actions together and it was like four player co-op but for this game obviously there's three characters so they're going to cross over in certain ways and I think Capcom confirmed that you could pick whatever character you wanted and you could take them into battle while at the same time having this guest system. So it seems like there are unanswered questions about how this co-op thing is going to work. If it's going to work like Resident Evil 6, then I assume you'll have the ability to cut the system off. You'll have the ability to extensively invite certain people who you want to join in your co-op crossplay adventures and then maybe like they will expand on it a little bit more in the future uh i think if you decide to play offline capcom unity did state that there will be ghost data that will take over in the single player campaign so you will be playing with an ai bot and crossover segments, which uh, it doesn't hurt the single player experience. So I don't see the issue there. Uh, hopefully it's implemented more than RE6 for people that are interested in that sort of co-op venture. And hopefully it's implemented into the new bloody palace, which they detail at the end of the video. So let's continue. Also, let me do a quick recording check because I've been going on for a while, man. I just want to make sure I got all this footage. So here's Dante flying around in DT. They're showing more of the guest system. Now that was interesting. You saw Dante do a real impact on the enemy that Nero threw and Buster. So that shows more co-op potential, co-op tag team moves maybe? Let's see more. Oh, look at all this destruction. A double laser attack and the frame rate is still remaining stable. I don't know how, fam. I don't know how. But the RE engine is doing the Lord's work, like I said before. So it looks like this world is crumbling. There's Trish naked on the ground. Trish on the ground again. Capcom has an affinity now. There's the mysterious other man. That's obviously Virgil. Okay, a lot of, a lot of frames to stop on. Like you can see Lady and Trish being captured by Urson. And there was a like frame of V and Double Trigger with his face cracked. See that? Now here's the real money shot. That is definitely 
desperate devil trigger or you know dante's margin form which is like his strongest form in devil may cry history that debuted in devil may cry 2. um there was some promotional material that i'm gonna try to find and put in the video at this point but it appears like dante has a different sword and that sword can make him tap into his Majin essence because rebellion was destroyed. So maybe it gets reforced into a demon weapon. Um, that's 10 times more powerful than it used to be. And this is the result, a stronger Majin trigger with a new reforged rebellion that brings out Dante's powers. Even more the theme of subhuman, as far as the lyrics go, they say that Dante, you know, uh, he has to awaken this inner power even if he doesn't want to he probably you know tries to fight going full demon uh and maybe there's some storyline issues with that you know i'm just speculating i'm just spitballing but the lyrics for subhuman says you know gotta erupt you know i can't explode i gotta explode shit like that so maybe there's a story reason why he can't go margin you know for way too long at least and here is the final screen don't make cry five with dante and v at that screen now here's the bloody palace stuff it's going to be a free dlc update that comes out april 2019 free update uh, I mean, I figured as much. They really probably spent a lot of time focusing on the main game and they just didn't have time to include it. Eh, I can't complain as many people. They're saying, oh, Capcom ripped us off. It's free fucking content. Free is free. <laughs> like, you, like, you can't complain about a free mode you're getting. At least it's not behind a paywall, you know? so i i can't the only thing i want is that i, I want them to do the guest co-op and if you want to play bloody palace either alone solo like i brought up ninja gaiden before in these videos with team missions so if you want to play by yourself that should be naturally okay and if you want to play with a partner duo you should have the option to do that as well i believe that will bring in a lot of replay value maybe put in like three players you know people could play with like all three characters if they picked and choose and made a session that would be awesome also the demo is already out on xbox one so if you have an xbox dust that baby off and play the devil may cry demo and tell me what your impressions are in the comments below but this is renegade operative signing off hopefully you guys enjoyed this ultra hype breakdown i'm ready for devil may cry 5 next year and please sound off in the comments tell me what you thought about this video like the video subscribe and check out my gaming community which is the tandem co-op commentary channel the infinite ammo syndicate and you can find me doing shit like the game awards inside xbox all of those reactions are going to be on that channel while i extensively cover other stuff here um i will be talking about the recent avengers in-game trailer and all the marvel stuff that's coming out this weekend uh supposedly there's going to be a spider-man far from home trailer so i just figured fuck it i might as well do a comic book podcast as well to give you guys extra content either way this is renegade operative signing off this video has gone on for almost 30 minutes now i know it's a lot i know it's a lot i have to plug one more thing check out the description below if you want to follow me on any social media account and i will see you guys next time hopefully you have a good night good day wherever you may reside peace and later